Shalom. Shalom. How is everybody doing today? Hope you're doing well. Here we are at the next counting of the Omer. Today is day 27, or three weeks and six days of the counting of the Omer. Let's say this blessing together. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, asher kitshanu v'mitzvotav v'tzivanu al separat ha-Omer. Which is, blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us by his commandments and commanded us about the counting of the Omer. Very good, very good. All right, so we are still in that journey uh, in the time between leaving Egypt and making it to the mountain. We're starting off in Exodus 14, verse 15. Uh, so we're going to read up until through verse 20. Through verse 21? Yes. Okay. All right, so, then Adonai said to Moses, Why are you crying to me? Tell B'nai Israel to go forward. Lift up your staff, stretch out your hand over the sea, and divide it. Then B'nai Israel will go into the midst of the sea on dry ground, and then behold, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, and they will go in after them, so that I will be glorified over Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and his horsemen. Then the Egyptians will know that I am Adonai when I have been glorified over Pharaoh, his chariots, and his horsemen. Then the angel of God who went before the camp of Israel moved and went behind them. Also the pillar of cloud moved from in front and stood behind them. And so, which makes it sound like there's two different things, at least the way this thing reads. Um... And so came between the camp of Egypt and the camp of Israel. There was the cloud and the darkness over the here, yet it gave light by night over there. Neither one came near the other all night long. And then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and Adonai drove the sea back with a strong east wind throughout the night and turned the sea into dry land, and so the waters were divided. All right, very good. So this is right after they were hearing in, back in the previous verses, uh, four, 13 and 14, that the Adonai is going to fight for them, and they're going to have, they just have to remain calm. They're going to hold their peace. Um, and uh, Adonai, he's the one that calls out, why are you crying to me? Tell them to go forward. And sometimes, you know, God tells us to start moving and acting before we actually even see what it is he's planning on doing. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's not always an easy uh, situation to be in. Mm -hmm. It is sure not. Uh, tell him to go forward. And then he gets the instructions to lift up your staff, stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it. You know, this kind of dividing is the same kind of dividing that was taking place even in the first days of creation. You know, he can separate the land from the sea. Mm -hmm. He can separate waters from waters. He can separate the sky above from the, the, the surface below, the heavens above from the heavens below, all that stuff. He, this is, he can divide all of it. This is nothing difficult or hard for him. And forward, you know, in the mind of the Egypt, of the Israelites, that wasn't a that wasn't a possibility because the sea was in front of them, and the Pharaoh and Pharaoh and his chariots were behind them. And so going forward into the water was not even an option as far as they were concerned. Right. Yeah. So I mean, here they are. They have the pillar that moves behind them and gets between them and the Egyptians. And now what? Okay, so there, the pillars behind us protecting us from the Egyptians. God's behind us protecting us from them. But we're looking at the sea. So where do we go? Mm -hmm. Where do we go? And of course, God had told um, Moses to lift up your staff, right? And hold it up. And he held it up all night. And here comes the wind, the east wind. Mm -hmm dividing the land. God tells them you're going to walk across on dry land. God wasn't asking them to go out into the water and drown. He took care of the water first. Mm -hmm. 
And so the east wind comes along and pushes the water back so that there's walls on both sides. So presumably you, you would assume that at some point you saw there were some waves involved there, mm -hmm. correct? Going back on each side, um, making dry ground where they could cross. Well, what's really interesting is when you get over into the New Testament, do you remember the account when Yeshua and the disciples are in the boat and Yeshua falls asleep and the storm comes and the waves come and the disciples are like, why, why is he asleep? Doesn't he care mm -hmm. if we drown? <laughs> right? What's he doing? God's right there. You know, Messiah is right there. The son of God, God is right there in the boat with them. <laughs> and... They're panicking. They're, they're panicking. Just like, just the, like, just the, like Israelites. The, the Israelites, right? They're, they're panicking. And so here you have the Shekinah, veiled in flesh, laying there in the boat, just like the Shekinah was with them, veiled in the cloud and the pillar of fire. Well, he's right there with them. And when he wakes up, he makes a statement about their faith, but then tells the sea to be still. Mm -hmm. And their response, I find absolutely amazing. It's in Mark chapter 4. It's the very last verse. It says, but they were terrified and asked each other, who can this be that even the wind and the waves obey him? Who is it? Who is it? Who, who is it that the wind and the waves obey? Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be only God who they obey. Yes. So they're asking the question, who is this that even the wind and the waves obey? They are lights of the ex. They're watching God. Only God can do, right? Um, and so we have to remember that even though we may be in in hard situations sometimes, and it may look like there's no way out, sometimes God puts us in a situation where only He can provide the way out. Mm -hmm. And that's what you see here with the Israelites. Only he could have done what he did. Mm -hmm. No no God, no demon, right? So no false God, no demon could do what God does right here. Mm -hmm. And no, none of them could stop him from doing it. And I think, yeah. I think it's much even the same, you know, for the people of God, there is this way out. But for Pharaoh and his army, there isn't one. Right. Because, you know, if you also notice, it says there was darkness over there, you know, with, with Egypt and his army. So even if they wanted to leave, I don't think they could because it was dark. Well, God's know. ready to, to judge. He judges. Yeah. So there was there was no turning around for them either because they, the, they were coming through that very narrow valley. So they were hemmed in on either side. They couldn't go to the right or the left. And the only way they could possibly go would be backwards, but everything is darkness. You know, for them, they can't see what's happening. They can't see what's going on over there uh, with the Israelites. They don't see uh, what's happening with the east wind. They don't see the, the, the sea dividing. They don't see the dry land appearing. Uh, none of that. All they, all they know is that we're in this valley, and they're on the other side of this pillar, you know, there's the, it's the angel of God who went before the camp, moved and went behind them. You know, the angel is the one that tends to be the one that appears in the fire. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why I was talking bush. about the pillar of fire in the, you know, with the burning bush. Yes. And then the cloud moves from in front and, sta and stands behind them. So the cloud is, uh, uh, is about veiling things. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the cloud provides that that even barrier between Egypt and the Lord, the presence of the Lord. Um, so he, they are prevented from seeing 
what's happening and the, even the danger that they are in. Um, and so he comes between the camp. And you know, so as much as there, this is an interesting point, um, that as much as there is a separating of the waters so that the dry ground will appear, you know, he is dividing the water from water uh, and all of that, he is also maintaining, maintaining a division and a divide between Egypt mm -hmm. and Israel which is really what the whole question, the whole point of them being a, a separate and a distinct people, a holy nation, a peculiar people. He keeps them, he wants us to be separated from Egypt and from the ways of the nations. He doesn't want the two to mix together, which is why he talks about not, not mixing different kinds of seed, you know, in the field. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the whole parable of the, the wheat and the tares. You know, that when those kind of mixing things happen, there's greater problems. And so at this point, God is maintaining the, the separation. And that's what his Torah, his law, is supposed to continue when they receive it at the mountain. Yes. I also want to um, point out, if you go back in chapter 13, in verse 21, who is it that is in the, the cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night? Who is it that's in there? Mm -hmm. It says Adonai. Adonai. yud heh vav -He, Hashem. Adonai is the one in the cloud. And then we come over to verse 19 in chapter 14. Next, the angel of God who was going ahead of the camp of Israel moved away and went behind them. The column cloud moved away and went fr from the from in front of them and stood behind them. Mm -hmm. So, so the Adonai, the angel of God, this is the angel of the Lord. This is this this is. They're used somewhat interchangeably here, yes, aren't they? This this is Yeshua. Because the Father's in heaven, the Father's going to come down on the mountain, and and you know, in a pillar of cloud, and then there's still going to be the pillar of cloud down there in the camp. Mm -hmm. His presence goes with them. And who is it that you know? I mean, we we have to come to terms with that Messiah is. The visible image, presence of the, the invisible yes, God. Yes, the visible image of the invisible God. And so when you when you see these manifestations of God, quote unquote, somehow being seen, seen whether in the pillar or in the fire or, or in the bush, something else is happening besides the Father because the Father is in heaven. Mm-hmm. Right? Not that he's not everywhere and omnipresent. I'm not saying that. But he's interacting in a physical way with the people. Mm -hmm. And of course, we know from the Targums that within Judaism, they took these things when God interacts physically with the people, and that is what they refer to as the Mimra, the Word. Mm -hmm. And we know who the Word is. The Word is Yeshua. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So that was a, a long-standing, a long-existing concept within Jewish thought of the memra of the Word, and the the Word being the the physical manifestation. So God is with them here. He's the one parting the waters. Yeshua is in the boat with the disciples. He can calm the wind and the waters. Mm -hmm. Who is this? This is the question. Of course, what is the question of Mark? Who do you say that I am? Who do you say that I am? Yep. You know, do you understand who I actually am? And uh, those moments of calming the waters and the sea is supposed to provide an answer for that. Yes, yes, it yeah. is. To that question because he also is one that you know they would say who can forgive sins but God alone he says hey so, I can do that yeah you think it's harder you think it's harder to say get up and take up your mat and walk and 
Uh, but, you know, just so you know, so as you, so you know that I have authority to forgive sins, pick it up and let's go. And he is making direct claims in moments like that. And yes, they're all is. through the Gospels, yes, if you are. know how to look for them. Okay, but so God is here and the Egyptians are being kept from seeing it. Right? They're keeping division, right? which is one of his, his purpose. Separate, right. Okay. And so... Moses stretch out, uh, stretches out his hand. Adonai drives the sea back. Turns the sea into dry land. Water on both sides? All water? Well, so that's, that, a, that's an interesting thought. I right. wonder, this is something in Jewish thought that I wonder what they say. He turned the sea into dry land. You know, the way it's always been pictured in, you know, nice Charlton Heston movies and everything is that uh, the waters part so much so that the, the, the bottom is exposed. Right? The, the, and that's dried up enough to where they can walk across. Right? Mm -hmm. That's typically how we picture it. And I'm just as mm -hmm. uh, common in that. But what did Peter prove? Uh -huh. Can can God make it to where you can walk on the, the surface of the water as if it's solid ground? Yeah, he can. Yes, he can. But at the same time, there's a wall of water on. Yes, on the there is certainly, the certainly, so certainly. It, it would appear that they're on dry land, and it does talk about land. Well, what we we think of. But you know, it, could he have done that? Yeah, he most definitely could have done that if if that's what he wanted to do. <laughs> yeah, but I, I'm only saying that because you know you you look at the topography of the of the maps of the bottom of the ocean. Right. You know it it, it drops down. It's rocky. It's bumpy. It drops down to a deep levels in places. Except for in that one. Except place. for in that one place. There's a literal land bridge underwater there, that is absolutely amazing. And of course that was thirty four. Hundred years ago, mm -hmm. right? Three thousand four hundred and fifty years ago, about actually, and so. Well, just, did I just you find not it, think any erosion could have taken place yeah. in the last three thousand? I just think years? it. I, it just struck me reading it this time that he says he turned the sea, yeah, into dry land. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, yeah, they. If, if, if he wanted to say just start walking, yeah, very I'm gonna I'm gonna clear this walk, out. I'm gonna make a path, the and then it's, it's to going to I'm, you're gonna just walk across. Yeah, uh, and he could keep it perfectly level the entire way without any hills or valleys or ups <laughs> and downs or nothing. Just walk right across like an escalator. Yes, he could have done that if that's what he wanted to do. And yes, Peter did prove that, right? Mm -hmm. uh, God proved that. Yeshua, Peter. Yeshua proved it. He mm -hmm. can walk on water. Yes, yes, he did. So yeah. Anyway, that just struck me. I'm thinking out loud here. Um, he does this. Mm -hmm. Any okay. other observations in there? You want to keep going, or no? I think we need to end it for today because tomorrow we wanna we want them to step foot into that dry land in the sea, mm -hmm. crossing the sea, and the Egyptians to come after them. So we'll do that segment tomorrow. But just know, God is the one in charge of parting the waters. Mm -hmm. Amen. And bringing us to a new life. Amen. Because we'll also talk about what this moment symbolizes. Yes. yes as we well. Will. Yes, we will. So with that. Because they're just getting started in their walk of faith, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Even though They've they. have just been they, redeemed. Even though they went through all those, those trials. judgments and trials and, you know, with the plagues and, and left Egypt and now they're facing this moment. This is just the beginning of their their faith walk. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, just the beginning. So, with that, uh, thank you for joining us for the counting of the Omer, and we will see y'all again in uh, hopefully tomorrow, but at least the near future for the counting of the Omer. Shalom, shalom. shalom.